So I think that all college students should live in dorms with communal bathrooms. And because I've suffered through that, I think everybody else needs to as well. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Black Student Success Podcast, where we bring you insight and guidance from successful Black professionals and students. My name is Selvin, and as always, we appreciate the support. So today we have Naya Jordan, who is a class of 2022 student at Boston University. Uh, she is also the second woman to be the, or second Black woman to be the student body president at her school. So we're going to talk to her about what her experience has been like as a college student building up to that point and any pieces of advice that she has for you all. So Naya, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So we're going to start the show how we always do by asking, who is Naya Jordan? Wow. Um, I know it's such a simple question, but there's so much I feel like I could go into. Um, so first, like you said, I'm a senior at Boston University, um, but I am originally from Mississippi, from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. That's where I was raised and I am proud of it. And I am excited to be back in person, actually. Um, so you know, everything was pretty much virtual for the last year and a half. So getting started back in person and leading the charge with that um, as student body president at BU. So heading a lot of events um, and with a lot of other organizations that I'm a part of as well. Um, so we're just trying to bring back a lot of livelihood to campus. And that's pretty much all of what I'm about um, is trying to make others very much feel comfortable um, in the space that we're currently in. That's what's up. So I appreciate the the introduction and, you know, uh, best of luck to you with just, you know, the undertaking of being the president as where, you know, as you're getting back into that physical space and probably reminding people what they can do and, you know, and, and the excitement that can come from that. So uh, that's really exciting stuff. So let's actually start back from before you started school, just to kind of check in on what your, fi uh, sorry, your family dynamic was, you know, before getting into college, what did that support look like and how did that build you the person that you are today? Yeah, that my family has definitely ingrained in me some amazing values that have gotten me to the leadership positions that I have today um, and definitely instilled in me the confidence that I can get to wherever I want to go. So um, my parents are in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, my mom, my dad, my brother's also there. So just from a very young age, um, my parents allowed me to try really anything and everything that I wanted to try. Um, it very much stemmed from watching my older brother do it too. He's four years older than me. So my brother would take piano lessons or take a violin lesson. And I would say, I would also want to do that. Or if my brother starts playing a sport, you know, I would also want to try basketball, soccer, you know, track, um, anything. And then they would encourage me to do that. So I think every club that I was interested in, in school, I was able to do, and they were able to support me in that. Um, and even outside of school, just any interest that I had um, in terms of creating my own fundraisers or you know, volunteering for different things in the town or even just trying to be a, as much as part of the community as much as I can. Uh, my parents were all about making that happen and making sure that they, that I knew that like I could do that even from like a very young age. So, you know, that's the mindset that I had going into college. And don't get me wrong, even though I may appear super confident today, it's definitely a continual process. Um, so even having such a great support system of people constantly encouraging me, there's always in the back of your mind that insecurity that maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not built for this. Um, but, you know, even so, even when you do have that support system, sometimes it can still be difficult. Um, but yeah, but that's a little bit about, about my family and uh, my a majority of my family is also um, in Mississippi. So to have even like extended family be there for your recitals and your concerts and, and everything else is also like such a great feeling. 
Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds like you you had a little bit of everything there. You had both your parents were really pushing you to do a lot of those things that you had in reach. Uh, you had your older brother to to basically kind of you know have as a model for those different things, allow you to, you know, you know, kind of get your feet wet with exploring different interests that you had, even if you were just kind of following what he was doing, you know, that was kind of giving you that stepping stone to, you know, get into some of those things that you like on your own. So it sounds like, it sounds like a, a very good foundation that you have. And especially when you mentioned the uh, extended family that you had that were attending different events to support you in that way. Um, I'm sure that that helped with, you know, like you said, you know, building that confidence. And of course, that's always a, um, you know, a journey in itself uh, to, you know, kind of catapult you into some of those different things that you're doing, especially now that you are, you know, away from Mississippi, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, a, a pretty considerable distance away from there and and um, and kind of doing those things on your own, but still kind of having the support of them, you know, from back home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just like even definitely would felt like follow my brother's footsteps um, all the time. And that's actually how I got into one of my most successful activities, which was speech and debate, um, you know, and I was also in a majority white school. My parents put me, we switched schools um, when I was nine years old. So being kind of placed in a completely new environment like that. Um, initially, I was kind of just like you know, a young kid ready to start school. But, you know, being one of the few people of color in, in the school environment, um, I think that's where some insecurities stem from as well, thinking I'm, I literally don't look like anybody else or sometimes I'm interested in different things. Like my background seems so different than everybody else's. Um, but that was another thing that my parents wanted me to do is say, like, you are not limited to what you look like or for other limitations that people have placed on you. Um, so despite that kind of being something that I felt like I had to continually overcome is that, you know, from simple things like I don't need to straighten my hair, you know, to be in the environment that I'm in, or I don't need to to talk a certain way. You know, there isn't anything that kind of makes you more or less black. And, you know, that's something that I felt like I've been able to reflect on at the age that I am now, but something I didn't quite realize when I was in high school. So that's why my support system was so important because I felt like, you know, being the, the, the not the only black girl, but, you know, like one of the two or one of the three in a small class, you kind of feel like you're on the outside looking in. So yeah. I kind of forced myself to, to, to do different things, to be out there and be like, you know, I'm not, any different than anybody else here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's um, there's uh, a certain level of you know authenticity that you you have to kind of learn over time, and and like you said, learn that it's not limited to certain things or aspects about you. And then um, you know, on the other side of the coin, you know, if you're in one of those situations where you're one of the few black students that you know not having to have all this pressure to, you know, be a certain level of representation for an entire race. I think that's like a common thing that you would find for, for those who are in those types of situations. And, you know, uh, it, it's kind of fortunate that you kind of learn that early on, or you're able to kind of reflect on those different things now, um, as it may be very similar or a similar um, environment that you're in now compared to, you know, that upbringing and now kind of knowing how to navigate that with having the support of your family. Yeah. And even at Boston University, even though the school is nowhere close to to being like having a lot of Black people here, um, even though it's 17,000 undergrads and roughly about 3% of that are Black students. So, you know, I'm still a minority, um, despite, you know, BU having like a very large international population. So there are a lot of students of color here, but you still, I'm still finding myself, you know, having to, to navigate that environment and whether that's people, you know, adjusting to the, whether like the language that you're using, I've just felt like I've, I've learned so much um, about myself and even how to handle myself in certain situations now and that it is absolutely okay to speak up and that there are other people also in the room that are willing to support you and that are willing to be there for you. So even being at BU, 
Um, BU has even just encouraged me to do that, but also even in the academic environment that I'm in, the classes that I'm in, even if something negative does happen, I've grown to where I can say something in a really like appropriate way. You know, it's not coming off where I'm like flustered and stumbling over my words. It's coming off to where I can definitely articulate myself to where I can explain what happened, what went wrong and what we should do now and go from here. That's what's up. That's what's up. So um, a lot of really good skills to, to, to be able to bring to the table there um, and, and really add to your experience as a college student. So uh, that kind of goes into our next question. Just, you know, what is that experience like at BU, you know, on the academic side, on the social side, uh, you know, with you trying to, to, to navigate and you, you now being a senior at this point, you have had the experience of, you know, going through at least three years in school. And then on top of that, having to be a college student during the pandemic and now kind of returning to that, that, uh, that physical space. So what has that experience been like for you overall? Yeah, it's, I mean, I definitely have discovered a lot about myself and, and my confidence. And I always say, um, like when I'm giving different speeches or something that who you see today is not who I was freshman year. And, you know, I just want to use that as a testament to how much I've grown um, because, you know, freshman year, I'm still looking in like a small, if I'm in a class of 12 to 15, you know, I could still be the only black person in the room. And I felt that maybe going to college, that's something that I wouldn't have to deal with anymore. That when we're discussing topics on race, that I wouldn't have to be the sole representation of the black perspective, because that sometimes can feel really heavy on people. And, you know, I don't believe that it is the responsibility of like the only black person, you know, to just completely educate you on all things black or black history and, and so on and so forth. Um, but also at the same time, being in that environment has like, even saying like, I am not the sole person that you need to, to come to and to look to for these answers, that there is research that you can go out and get there on your own is something that I've learned in college. And, and it's harder to, I was like learning to, to definitely speak up more, you know, freshman and sophomore year, and then sophomore year, um, spring semester, the pandemic happened and everybody went home. And it almost felt like starting over in terms of learning how to speak up literally in class, like with unmuting yourself. Um, so, you know, here I am on this journey for myself and then, everything is interrupted and now it's like how am I supposed to like assert this confidence that I've learned in a, a computer screen and you know and it's like if, should I even say anything at all at this point is it even worth it because you know the professor's confused I'm confused just in terms of how like what the rest of the year is going to look like um but it's being in, I would say, leadership leadership positions and being able to hear from a lot of different students has shown me that people are still kind of craving that life and that social life. And they want to be like satisfied academically as well, even virtually. And so, you know, you have to think of different ways where like we can't look at where you are and think, well, I'm just going to pause until we, you know, come back to normal. You have to find ways to take what you have and be very innovative through that. Um, so, and honestly, I felt like when we, when we first went home, I would have wanted to take that pause in terms of me growing, in terms of me learning. Cause I'm like, you know, what's the point? How are we even doing this over a screen? Um, and then, you know, come junior year, even though we're more, you know, as part of some classes in person, but mostly most classes are virtual, you know, I still had to, you know, be with my student body in terms of saying like, okay, this is what we want to do. And this is how we're going to do it safely. Like you're still thinking of new ways for students to, to be bold, for them to feel more comfortable to speak up in class, even though they're on Zoom um, and things like that. So we we kind of like I was growing and then I felt like I maybe I, I stopped for a minute, but um, then it's like, OK, I can't stop. You know, other people are also looking up to you. You know, you're you can't let um, like the a lot of different outside challenges impact how that's going to grow on how you're going to grow. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, it's, that is very, very interesting that you mentioned that, you know, just, you know, you kind of feeling like you wanted to stop at some point because of that 
interruption that happened as you're kind of in this climb of growing as a person, personally, academically, and then, you know, kind of putting the pieces together so that you can start to build that professional side of you. And, um, and it, and it sounds like, you know, taking that time between when, when things uh, started to, you know, become re more remote and everybody was trying to figure out what was going on. And, um, and it sounds like at the beginning of that following year that you had the time to kind of uh, reflect on that and, you know, try to decide what you're going to do as a person in leadership, you know, with um, a number of different students who are kind of looking to you for that uh, support to that guidance and um, figuring things out. I think one of the biggest things that the pandemic has done is made us a little bit more creative than we, you know, would have been under normal circumstances. Um, and so it sounds like you've taken that and really applied that. And now coming back in person, you have all this, you know, experience from this past year to, to build off of and, um, you know, get people excited because you're able to maneuver uh, in a mostly virtual setting. And now you have more of the resources to actually make uh, a, a more productive year. So, um, you know, it, so, so that aspect was pretty cool. And, um, and, and the fact that you were still able to kind of maneuver through, you know, being the minority in some of your classes or just in the school as a whole, um, but kind of taking what you've used before and then being able to uh, still capitalize on those things and, and, and be able to kind of move forward and probably inspire some of the other students who might feel in the same, you know, same boat uh, in terms of, of being a minority in whatever case that may, that may be. So, um, so it's, it's, it's a really uh, unique experience, something that you can definitely, you know, five years later reflect on this and to see how much of that has grown uh, you into the person that you will, will be five years from now. And um, is 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 I'm um, I'm sure you're pretty excited about being able to kind of uh, basically take it home with this senior year. Oh yeah, I am so excited for for what's to come with my student government team and um, the other organizations that I'm a part of, like Sisters United, for example, which is an empowerment group for Black and Brown women on campus. Um, I've even had people already reach out to me before classes have even started, you know, saying. Like, like thinking like, how can I get involved on campus? What can I do now? And that's something that we didn't see last year as much. Um, that's something people weren't even sure who to reach out to or what they were interested in because they weren't able to see it, you know, full blown or, or what that club actually did. So to, to see that energy on, again on campus is something we absolutely want to capitalize on. And also something that, you know, I, my like how student leaders like myself and others that's what we're here for is to create those avenues for people to be creative and express themselves for them to you know have a lot of fun and meet new people at events you know that's definitely what we're here for um and also just my senior year being able to participate in traditions again um one big uh, tradition that we just had was the matriculation walk for the class of 2025 um, and I was the undergraduate speaker for the matriculation. And this class is actually one of the biggest classes that BU has had. It was a little over 4,000 students. And so to see, you know, a couple thousand students walking along the sidewalk with the BU band in front of them, it was, you know, pretty amazing, very, really a surreal experience um, to even be outside with like a large number of people saying like this is my home now and I'm so happy to be here and I'm ready to to do that to do all that I can do. Um I'm I'm so happy to be back and to to definitely encourage more people, you know, like yes, go go to in-person events or or go to the the pumpkin drop that's happening because the the engineering building that you know, happens up the engineering building every year or just any and every other tradition. Um and it's I'm just I can't even put really into words how how happy I am to see that um, and also for for students to be back. Um, like, I think this is just going to be a year where you see probably like the highest engagement in, in student clubs and people um, in student activism. And and hopefully, you know, you see a rise in and like better mental health and other programs associated with that um, because people are just so happy to be back, to, to be in person, to, you know, hug 
a friend and not be afraid. Um, that's, you know, the energy that we are hoping to bring. And that's, I think, definitely the energy that I'm feeling and hoping to take with me throughout my entire senior year. Yeah, that's definitely has to be an amazing feeling to be able to start to get into those those pieces, those, you know, what we probably thought of as smaller pieces of, of engagement, like you said, being able to just hug somebody without having to worry um, and, and express that, you know, excitement or, you know, care for somebody um, to be able to, to do all of that and all of those things that were missing from that past year and a half. So, so, so definitely excited for you too, as well, to be able to really push through that. So um, now with, um, with some of the, uh, you know, I know you mentioned some of the things in terms of how you kind of, you know, maneuver on campus as a black student, the different groups and supports um, that you that you have. Um, you can definitely um, add to more of that that you haven't already mentioned. Um, but I also do want to ask you, you know, how do you or where do you find the inspiration to kind of push through all of those different things um, that could be, you know, things specific to now uh, to bef- before um, just the leadership positions that you've had. You mentioned that you do a lot of speaking. Where do you find the inspiration to to really uh, go through all those things without getting overwhelmed? Right. I think when I get overwhelmed, I think about my roots, you know, my home. So I think about Mississippi and and what it it took for me to to get here. Um, And at the same time, how nobody else from Mississippi is here. Um, I think about the example that other others have set for me and and how I even want to set an even better example. And that is, you know, largely what drives me when I'm tired is knowing that at least one person is going to be like inspired or encouraged from what I'm doing now, from the work that I'm doing now, because I remember looking at, you know, other black women who are not really too much older than me and thinking, I want to be where they are, but I'm not sure how to do it. Um, And that's what made me realize how important it is, especially for Black women, to be an example and to be in leadership. And, you know, I'm hoping that with, I was really inspired by the the first Black woman student body president at BU, which is why I'm, you know, I'm so happy to be the second. And I'm hoping I'm inspiring the third and the fourth and fifth and so on and so forth. I, you know, like I, I want that to be there for people not to be like, well, that's typically not what a lot of Black people do. And it's because a lot of people were not given that opportunity before. So that is a large part of what is inspiring me is knowing that, you know, we are, you know, Black people are, are still breaking barriers. We are still having a lot of first. And we need to kind of keep carrying the, the baton, you know, to have our seconds and to have our thirds, um, because that's something that I'm not seeing a lot is that we may have our first. And then sometimes it, it stops there and then you won't see another black person in that leadership position um, for years. So um, my hope is that, you know, inspiring Mississippi kids, you know, that you can go to college out of state um, and you can come back to Mississippi and make it better. You know, it's for people to to look at you as inspiration to keep that, that chain going. Um, So, you know, when it's a a, a dark day and it's hard to get through um, really, I'm thinking, of all the other people that I'm going to be able to help once I get through this or with the speech that I'm procrastinating on writing, I'm like, think about how your words are going to impact other people. Um, so that's, I think that's a large part of my inspiration and, and my drive. Nice, nice. Uh, impact is a word that definitely stuck out there uh, with, um, you know, everything that you built up to. Um, I think that word really sums up all the things that you um, you know, that where you, where you kind of really pull from and, uh, it, it must be, you know, in some cases, you know, a little bit of pressure, but also, you know, very fulfilling to be in the position where you know that you're going to have that impact, you know, thinking that, you know, one of those 4,000 students who was walking and, you know, you were, you know, uh, you know, a, a part of kind of putting that together that, you know, one of those students who might be looking at you and, 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 and seeing the impact of just being that leader to, uh, you know, organize that, that, you know, tradition. So, um, so it was really cool to, to see that um, and kind of hear that in action, kind of your thought process, you know, <clears throat> if you run into a challenge, what are you going to, you know, how are you going to kind of maneuver through that? So, um, so that was really dope to hear. 
Yeah. I always think, you know, who kind of even getting through a tough class, like I'm thinking, who am I doing this for? And as much as I want to do this for myself, I, you know, want to do this for, you know, the next black girl in Mississippi who, who is thinking about, well, maybe I want to go to New York or maybe I want to go to DC. And, um, my, my dad actually, he volunteers, um, at the, at our local juvenile center. And so I've been able to talk to a lot of kids just up close about their stories. And if anything, like, you know, why do you feel like you can't do X, Y, and Z? Because you absolutely have the, so much potential to do that. And I even think you will find just like the brightest kids, the smartest kids, the most creative kids. And then they're overlooked because you see, oh, well, they went to a juvenile detention center when that doesn't define them. And I want to just like reach a wide, a wide variety of kids, just especially in the South, when people look down on the South and talk down on themselves. And, you know, we, I think a lot of people are overlooked. Um, and I think I was one of those people, you know, sometimes even saying you're from Mississippi, you know, people kind of like, oh, that's just racism. And that's it. When, you know, there's so much more to, to our culture and to the people there. And you're thinking about how, like, I'm thinking Mississippi, who has the most Black people per population. And yet we are missing so many resources and so many students finishing college and, you know, just not, there's not a lot of emphasis on, on education. Um, and I want to be part of the group, part of a person that that does put that emphasis on it, um, put emphasis on education and emphasis on you have a lot of potential and here's what you can do with that. And you can do whatever you want to do, like whatever career goal that you set for yourself, here's how you can do it. And I don't know if that's like an organization or just being there to support someone, but you know, that's what I want to do. And that seems really deep to think about, like, that's how you get through an assignment. <laughs> But, um, you know, always think about like, have, you know, your quotes in front of you or, you know, have a phone call with your mom or something like, who are you, who are you doing this for? What is this going to do for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the South has something to say and you're, you're definitely the embodiment of that. So, so, so thank you for all the the work that you do. Um, How do you define this success? What is it that, you know, what are the, the, the points of success, you know, in your opinion, or, you know, your personal definition that you abide by and that you strive for? Yeah, I would define success is liking what you do and how you do it. So really, you know, of course, success is what you define it to be. So um, I said this, actually, my matriculation speech to the class of 2025 at BU is that some, you know, being in a pandemic, sometimes a successful day is getting out of the house, you know, moving into college is a successful day in like the matriculation ceremony, you know, and to one of the best colleges in the country is a super successful day. And that's, that's really how I feel about like, you, sometimes you just need to make a list for yourself. And when you knock down your things on your list, you know, that is that success for you in that moment. Or when you reach a goal that you've been working towards for a couple of years, like that is success. And that's not something you need to look at everybody else at. You don't think, well, they got that position, you know, two years before I did. You know, I don't think that matters. I think you're going to get the best thing for you at the best time that you need it. Um, and sometimes even like I, I think some losing or not achieving some things is kind of like, a, a way to humble you in a way, a way to prepare you for the best thing that is coming for something like, so when you do achieve that, when you have worked for it, when you went after it again, you're going to appreciate that. You're going to appreciate that way more than if you just kind of got it originally. Um, and that right there is like kind of working for it, that um, that's success to me. So liking what you do and how you do it. Awesome. Awesome definition with that. Thank you very much for that. And now before we wrap up now, um, you know, we, we always want to ask, you know, one or two fun questions. So, you know, with you being in the midst of being a college student, what do you think is one rite of passage that all students should go through? Oh, I really like this one. 
So I think that all college students should live in dorms with communal bathrooms. And because I've suffered through that, I think everybody else needs to as well. (laughs) Um, It's even though it is, it is a lot at times, but you know, sometimes you might just like run into somebody in the bathroom and that might be your new friend or something like that. I just think living in kind of like a, a, a regular dorm um, when you're kind of forced to share things, um, I think that bonds you with people, maybe not in a way that you even wanted to be bonded, but, you know, I think some of my closest friends, I think I've met, have like lived on the same floor as me or in like the same dorm as me. Um, so, and even complaining together, like about the like communal experience, um, you know, that's a, that's a bonding thing right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's the best of times and the worst of times, depending on <laughs> who it is or who you run into. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you you you've summed it up very well um, as far as what that communal experience is like. Um, you know, yeah, and I agree. You know, we all went through something in that in that uh, in that environment, so everybody else should go through that something too. So so so, thank you for sharing that. Um, Naya, oh, that's yeah. all I have for you. <laughs> that's all I have for you. So thanks so much for sharing your experience and you know uh, a lot of inspiration that you had and some of the answers that you had so i really do appreciate it um any last words before we wrap everything up one thing that i always tell people when they ask like what's some advice that you would give to yourself or even advice that i give to to other people i say you are enough that is just something that i repeat to myself especially when, you know, I'm not, I'm feeling a little down is that whatever you are doing and whatever activity or whatever you're going for, know that you are enough and that your voice is valued wherever you go. Even if the company that you're at or the classroom that you're in does not seem to value it, know that your voice is valued, that you are enough. So, you know, go apply for that position, speak up in that class. You got it. Awesome. Awesome. Very great advice. So again, thanks, Naya, for for joining the show. And thanks to everybody for listening and watching. Be sure to follow us on social media. That's Inquire Higher on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out our website, inquirehigher.com. And then you can check out our new uh, online community where we have uh, both Black students and Black professionals residing, sharing uh, relationships in terms of uh, mentoring and resources. And we're, you know, looking to build that. So definitely check that out on our website. So until next time, peace.